All right, let's talk. So um, we've got a vehicle after it's um, been purchased is given by this expression. What does a 3000 represent in this expression? The down payment, so the initial cost of the payment, okay? So the initial amount, what is it to represent? How many years? So two years. Is this a growth or decay? Decay, how do we know? Because it says minus, okay. What did you say? Yeah. So if we did one minus 0 0.06, what would that give us? One minus 0 0.06. That's going to give us 0.94, right? And that's less than 1, right? Remember how we talked about B being less than 1? Okay, so this is a decay. Also, think about it. If you buy a car, does it go up in value or down? Down, okay? The moment that you drive a brand new car off the lot, it decreases by 50%, okay? So what is the rate of growth or decay? The rate is going to be 0 0.06 or 6%. We're going to talk a little more about this today. And then go ahead and take a moment and evaluate the expression. So plug this into your calculator. Tell me what you get. All right. So what I got from that was 2,650.80. Is that what you got? Yeah. Okay. So we've been talking about this expression, A times B raised to the X. Another way you can write this is A times 1 minus R raised to the x. These are kind of interchangeable depending on what you're talking about. This is what we call simple interest. Simple interest. Okay. So today we're going to talk about how to actually like write out these equations. Okay. Um, so writing out these exponential equations that represent both exponential growth and decay in real world. All right. So let's say that you've inherited a land that was purchased for $30,000 in 2000. The value of the land is depreciated by approximately 5% per year. Write an equation that models the value of the land as it relates to time that has passed. Okay, so again, we just talked about the fact that we have A times 1 minus R raised to the T. R is going to be the percentage that we're dealing with. Okay, so what was the initial amount of the land? 30,000. Okay, so we're going to write 30,000. And then one minus this percentage. Now, every time that we have a percentage, we're going to change it to a decimal. If you didn't know how to change a percentage to a decimal, you're going to take the number and move the decimal place over twice. If there's an open spot, you're going to put a zero. So this will be 0 0.05 raised to the T. Now, obviously, we can simplify this, right? We can say 1 minus 0 0.05, which is 0.95 raised to the T. Yesterday, we talked about how we were each time taking one third, we're spending one third, right? And our equation was 1 minus one third, which gave us two thirds on that, that uh, parentheses. Same thing's happening here. Now, what is the approximate value of the land in the year 2023? So from 2000 to 2023, how many years have passed? 23, right? Okay, so we're going to plug in 23. So go ahead and type that into your calculator and tell me what you get. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so you're typing that into your calculator. Okay, so I got 9,220.71. 
You're going to round to two decimal places because we're dealing with money, right? Everybody know how to round? Yes, no, maybe. When that next number is greater than five, you're going to round up. If it's less than five, you're going to round down. In the last 12 years, an initial population of 38 buffalo in a state park grew about 7% per year. To model, I'm sorry, use the tables to help write an equation modeling the situation. So, initially, how many buffalo do we got? 38. So, we're going to put 38 on here. Okay, now we're going up by 7%. So, how do we figure out 7% increase? Okay, so take 38 and multiply it by 0 0.07. Tell me what you get. Okay, and we can't have half a buffalo, so we're gonna like round up. Yeah, okay, so 2.66. So what am I gonna do with that 2.66? Add it to that 38, right? So that would give me 41, because we're gonna round to three. Right. Now we're going to take that 41 and do what to get the next one? Is it three each time? We got to multiply 41 times 0 0.07. Tell me what you get. Say it again. Still 2.87, and we're going to add that to 41, right? And that's going to give us 44, or 43.87. Okay, we're going to take 44, and we're going to multiply it by 0 0.07, right? So we're going to add 3 to that one. That's going to be 47. Buffalo. Sometimes in these problems, they're going to round it in the table, and sometimes they won't. So let's write an equation for how we went about solving that. What was our initial population? 38, right? So we've got 38. Now, are we adding or are we subtracting? Are we increasing or are we decreasing? We're adding. So we're going to be 1 plus, what was our rate? 7%, which is 0 0.07. And we raised it to the T power, depending on the year. Let me see where we did that. Now, using the equation that we just created, how many buffalo would there be after eight years? So we're going to take eight. We're going to plug it into our equation. So take a moment, type that into your calculator. I need you to practice this because this is where most people are having trouble, is actually typing it in. How much? Did y'all get 65? Okay. Make sure you got the same thing. Pretty sure you're right. Yeah, 65. Okay. Does everybody see why we're rounding those? Again, it's because it, you can't have half a buffalo, right? Okay. So, again, down in this little box, you're going to write the equation, which will be 38 times 1 plus 0 0.07 raised to the t power. Yes, you can simplify what's in that parentheses. You can say 1.07, um, but for right now, we can leave it like that. Okay, in two seconds, I want you to kind of summarize what we just went through with those two problems. What was the same? What was different about those two problems? Take two seconds doing that. This is what we're doing. Um, again, yesterday, we talked about this situation. It's the same thing. Um, we're just talking about exponential growth and decay when we're talking about population. The two words that I need you to really kind of focus in on 
is this word depreciated? Depreciated means we're going down. So that's going to always be your one minus. Okay. We see that in a word problem. That's what's happening. Now, if I say population grew, that's going to be that plus, right? So notice how right here, it has it written as plus minus because you could have a depreciation or you could have it grow. Let me see it. Okay, so same thing that we were doing yesterday, just a little different. Okay, take a moment. See if you can answer this question. You don't have to put it on a sticky note. I just want you to answer it at your desk. Okay, so you got Tony the Tiger. Do you know who Tony the Tiger is? Yeah, cross the plates. Yes, no. Yeah, okay. Um, has 4,250 followers on social media. His number of followers is increasing at a rate of 3% per week. Which function represents his number of followers each week? So pick the equation that represents that. Pick, um, how many of y'all think it's A? How many of y'all think it's B? How many of y'all think it's C? How many of y'all think it's D? Okay, so are we increasing or are we decreasing? We're increasing, okay? And from what y'all have kind of told me, you think it's either C or D, okay? So we know that we start with that 4,250, okay? And you told me it's increasing. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna say one plus our 3%. So what's one plus 0.03? Okay, so is this guy, right? Okay, now if he was decreasing, so if he was getting canceled, right, we would get 0.97. Make sense? Okay, cool. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, we're gonna come back to all of this. Um, I do wanna kind of go through some stuff for your um, mastery check. Is there space on the back of that one? There's some like blank space. No, maybe. Okay. I want to work through a couple of problems just for your mastery check um, so that you're good to go. Just find some space. We're going to work like maybe three problems. Okay. So for your mastery check, we talked about transformations yesterday. And so it looked like this, right? Where H was our horizontal shift. That was like left, right. A was our up, down. That's our vertical shift. A was our stretch or compression. You could say shrink as well. And then negative was a reflection. Okay, so if I told you on question one that I have a parent function that looks like this, two to the X, and I want you to move it left, three, down, five, and reflect, what is that gonna look like? So if you were to write out this equation, okay, what's gonna happen? is you're gonna move left three, that's gonna be plus three in the exponent, down five is gonna be minus five, and then a reflection is that negative. Okay, questions on that? Okay, the parent function might be different for each problem. So just make sure that you pay attention to what they tell you as the parent function. Start with that and then just kind of build from there. Okay, if I said, a parent function of three to the X. And I have, no, oh, let me try this again. I had something like negative two times three raised to the X plus five plus six. Can you describe what's going on here? So the parent function is three to the X. Can you describe the transformation that's happening? Okay, so what's going on here? Describe that transformation. What's the negative mean? Reflect. What does the two mean? Stretch a two. Okay, what does that five mean? Left five. And what is the six? Up six. The only one that's opposite is what's in that exponent. Yeah. Okay, and the last one is a little weird. If I give you a parent function of four to the X plus five. And I say, move this um, 
shrink it by one half. Um, go right two and down seven. What is that gonna look like? So start with that original and move it. Okay, so take a second, try that one. They're goodies. Okay, shrink up one half. So that's gonna be a one half out front. Right two, that's gonna be minus two. And then down seven, you're gonna take five and subtract seven. So that's gonna be negative two. So negative two. Are there any questions about this? Feel pretty confident? Most of the time, the only thing that people mess up is the left, right. So just remember, if it's going to the right, is it going to be minus or plus? Minus. If it's going to the left, is it going to be minus or plus? Plus. Okay. All right. So y'all would rather drive the Porsche, right? Why? Because it's better. Define better. It looks better. Okay. It's faster. Porsches are faster. Well, depending on the, the Jeep. Um, okay, cool. All right, so we're going to determine the value of a vehicle over time by writing an exponential function. Okay, so part one. Every year after a new car is purchased, it loses 25% of its value. The purchase price of a new car is $24,000. A buyer worries that the car will be worth nothing in four years. Do you agree? So take a moment, think about it. Is it going to be worth nothing in four years? Kind of write out your thinking real quick. This. If we started off with 24000 how much is it going to be worth the next year? So the first, oh, I'm sorry, zero year, we're at 24000 How much is it going to be worth next year? It's dropping by 25%, right? So is it going to be worth 6,000? Minus 6,000. So what's 24 minus 6,000? Okay. Or 18,000, right? Okay. What about the next year? It's 25% of 18,000. That's 4,500, right? And so if we take 18,000... Too many zeros. Take 18,000 and subtract 4,500 from there. That's going to be 13,500, right? What about year three? Well, if we take that, multiply it times 0.25 and subtract 13,000, it's going to be 9,625. Year four, we're at, sorry. Did that wrong. We're at 7,218.75. So is it worth nothing? No, I mean, $7,000 isn't something to scoff at. But in four years, we went from 24000 to 7000 So you know when those people buy those like new fancy cars? It's like, that's great. But in like five years, you just lost a lot of money, right? I'm not saying don't buy a new car, but used cars, sometimes the way to go. Okay, so what I want you to do is tell me what will be the value of the car in five years and 10 years. Now you can write an equation to help you do this. You don't have to do this all the way out with the table, right? But if it helps you, that's fine. You can do it that way. But write out an equation, okay? Remember, we just talked about this A times one minus R raised to the T. Okay, that might help you out. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment. That's what you're working on. So you should have gotten a, an equation kind of like this. Yeah. Oh, JK. All right, so that 25% is because we're losing 25% each year. T represents time. Okay, remember, we're going to put that as 0.25 here instead of just 25. Remember, we got to convert it. Um, one thing that I feel like we need to get a little bit better about the fact that a lot of us leave off this V of T. What this is representing is value of time, okay? Or value of the car over time, okay? And that 24,000, we already know, was our initial amount, okay? Again, this is what it looks like without, 
plugging in on everything. Okay, go ahead and take a moment and go ahead and do practice two or part two. So you're gonna explain what the numbers mean. And then after how many years will the call you card be less than its original? Mm, let me try this again. Less than half of its original value. Will the value of the car ever reach zero? Why or why not? So go ahead and take a moment, answer these three questions. Okay. Okay. So if we're looking at percentages, okay, so we got half. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So we got half, then we got a fourth, then we got an eighth, then we got a sixteenth. So what's happening with these fractions here? If we just looked at the denominator, what are they doing? Shot. Like, say again? Multiply by two. So 16 times two is what? 32. So we're going to have one over 32 on this last box. Okay. And then looking at these decimals, what's happening with those? So that point, point 0.5. Ignore the decimal. If we went from 50 to 25, what would we be doing? 50 to 25. Mm -hmm. We subtract. We're multiplying here. We're dividing by how much? Two. Okay, so we're dividing by two. So somebody in their calculator take 0. 0.125, divide by two, and tell me what you get. Okay, so 0, 0.625, right? Okay, if we take that, we divide by two. Tell me what you get. Zero point zero three one two five. Okay. All right, and we just did that in percentages as well. We just have to convert decimal to percentage. So this is going to be twelve point five percent, six point two five percent, and three point one two five percent. Okay. All I did was I moved that decimal place over to the right twice. Okay. Now, these fractions are the exact same thing as these decimals. So if you times 1 divided by 32, you should get 0 0.03125, okay? All right, so we're going to continue to explore the exponential decay. Um, you're going to use this a lot in bio and chem, so I just want to set you up for success. Um, I'm going to skip to this little table really quick. I know this is like printed twice on your thing. So it says a doctor prescribes 400 milligrams of medicine to treat an infection. Each hour following the initial dose, 85% of the concentration remains in the body for the preceding hour. So like if you ever take like ibuprofen or any kind of medication, it always says on the bottle, like don't take more than two in like six hours or whatever. That's because it's going through your system and it's kind of like it's working and there's a peak hour of it working. And then the rest of the time, it's kind of just dissolving in your body. So this is what's happening each time. So looking at the third box, we've got 400 times 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85. What's that going to give us? So 400 times 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85. That's going to give us 245, 245.65. So the next hour would be 400 times 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85. And why am I doing this four times? It's the exponent or it's the number of hours, right? So we're going to multiply that by 0.85. And that's going to give us 208. 0.80. And then if we do it again, we're going to do it for the fifth hour. And this is why exponents are important because otherwise we'd have to write this out so long. So the next hour is going to be 177.48. Okay. So from hour zero, which is 400 milligrams, to five hours later, you still have about half of the medication in your body, right? You okay on that? 
Um, just a refresher, because I know we probably haven't talked about this that much. Rounding to the nearest hundred. Do y'all remember back in like, I think it was like middle, middle or elementary school. When you have decimals, you've got like a number over here and then you have numbers over here, right? This is your tenth place. This is your hundredth place. And this is your thousand. Okay, so if I say round to the hundredth place, if I had this number, I would have 1.03. Does that make sense? Okay, so we need to be good about rounding because that does change your answer a lot. Especially when we do like built to math, they're going to ask you to round a bunch. Okay, so if you don't know your tens, hundred, thousandth place, I have to write that down. Okay. You need to know this for your SAT as well. All right. So go ahead and take a moment. How would we determine the amount of medicine in the body after 10 hours? How would you determine the amount of medicine in the body after 10 hours? What equation would you write? Take a second. See if you can figure that one out. You could have sat there and you could have calculated all the way out to the 10th hour. Um, ain't nobody got time for that. So when we do this, we're going to say 400 times 1 minus what's happening each hour. Like how much are we losing each hour? 85%, right? So we're losing, I'm sorry. We still have 0.85 in the body. So that's going to be 0.85, and we're going to raise it to the 10th power. So what did you get when you plug that in? What did you get when you plug that in? Oh, really don't make me do this on a iPhone calculator. Shame. Mm -hmm. All right, so after the 10th hour, we've got 78.75. That's going to be how much is left in the body. Okay. Um, how many of y'all drink, like, caffeine drinks in the morning? Like, coffee, energy drinks, sodas. Maybe y'all are better people than me. Nobody drinks nothing in the morning? How are y'all lie? Okay, so how caffeine works. You start off with either like 200 to 300 milligrams if you're doing an energy drink. If you're drinking coffee, it's 60 milligrams or so. And it cuts about half each hour. Okay. Um, and that's why like people will drink coffee in the morning and then by like 2 p.m. they need another cup or they need something else. Right. Very addicting, by the way. Stay off caffeine, kids. So do you think the medicine will last forever? Will it always be in your system? No, eventually it'll probably wash out, right? Now, it may take some time, um, but that's why, like, when they say, hey, don't drive with these specific medications, they mean it because it does take some time for it to, like, get out of the body. Okay, so do you think the medicine will last forever? No, it will eventually dissipate. Okay. Like when you take medication, normally, eventually, I don't want to say you pee it out, but you do. Okay. All right. So here it is in table form, equation form, and graph form. Remember, these three are directly correlated. If you are ever given just a graph, okay, you can make a table out of that. If you're given just a graph, you can write an equation and vice versa. You can graph all of those with the table and the equation. Here is our asymptote, yeah? It'll always, you'll always have like a little bit of that medication. I mean, eventually, like if you're, you know, three years down the road, obviously that'll be outside of your system. However, it will approach that zero, but never touch it according to our equation, yeah? All right, go ahead and take a moment. Read this problem over. 
and see if you can write the equation for this one. Okay, so take a moment, read it over, and see if you can write the equation for this one. All right, so do you think that it's exponential decay or exponential growth? Is she increasing or is she decreasing? Decreasing, so yes, it's decay. Okay, now one thing I do want to note, um, how much is she going down by each week? How do we figure that out? Because they didn't tell us like a rate, they didn't tell us like a percentage, right? So in order to get our rate, we're gonna take the second number and divide it by the first. So somebody type 150 divided by 300. So 150 divided by 300, what'd you get? One half or 0.5, okay? And you always wanna make sure it works for everything. So like 75 divided by 150 is also 0.5. 370, 50 divided by 75 is also 0.5, right? And the reason why it's decay is because the rate is equal to 0.5, okay? Now write an equation that best represents the amount of gift money. So how much did she start with? So she started with 300. We're going down by 0.5 and we're raising it to the W power. Okay, so remember when we write this, we wanna say G of W. So G represents the amount of money and W represents the amount of week. Okay, so when you write that equation out, you have to put G of W or some type of function name. Okay, good on that one. Okay, so if they don't give you the rate, you can still find it by taking the second number and dividing it by the first number, right? Okay, so you're gonna look at these task cards. So this is the other sheet that she picked up. Okay, and I want you to see if you can answer these questions. There's one about sea turtles and then there's one about an ant colony population. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment. You're working on these. If you can do this, then you could be, yeah, I'm sorry. You can um, do the mastery check on writing equations that's gonna be on March 21st. Okay, so if you're able to do this, then you should be okay on that. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment. You can work with a partner if you wanna divide it up, that's okay too, okay? So go ahead and take a couple minutes. 